All right, what's going on there, folks? Welcome back here to a Wednesday night update here. It is the Earthmaster, about uh, 10.42 p.m. here, California time, May 15th, 2024. Latest activity shows, uh, looks like a 2.8 out here and a 1.5, 1.5 in Alaska, 2.8 hiding down there in the South America region. We did see an earthquake just come in here to the uh, Peru Chile Trench recently with a 5.2 earthquake coming in. About 35 kilometers deep there in that region. So uh, let's go ahead and check out the latest activity here from the Space Weather Department here real quick. Uh, things have kind of toned down a little bit since the uh, double X-flare event last night. Did see uh, X-flare from the departing sunspot and also an X-flare from a newer sunspot coming around the bend on the eastern limb. So let's go ahead and check this out real quick, see what we got. Uh, the sunspots here on the magnetogram image shows the complexity of the magnetic fields and and that massive sunspot that uh, produced all the x flare activity recently is no longer visible whatsoever out here this is actually not it right here on the western limb but much further out we'll see here in a couple weeks if that returns for another show or not uh, in the meantime we have this massive area over here i'm kind of watching this region pretty closely because it looks very similar to that uh, sunspot that just left over here on the western limb. Uh, looking at the complexity here looks very similar, at least from what I can see. This is going to be a, a very interesting scenario to see if the sunspot can uh, match some of the strength here that the uh, former sunspot over here has produced. Now this is a newer region. This is the area that did produce an X-flare here this morning though. That was a uh, uh, an X 2.9, an unnamed sunspot. So th there you can see it right there. It was way out there on the eastern limb. That is the active region that is coming around here. And uh, it, again, it's not named yet, but man, it looks super complex here. We're going to have to watch this pretty closely. Also, uh, a couple different regions here. This area has shown some uh, pretty decent complexity within this sunspot core. And, um, you know, there's a, there's a couple other regions up here that are disorganized and scattered about. Uh, but I think the main regions here are going to be this area and definitely this region back here across the eastern limb to watch here in the coming days uh, for uh, some stronger flaring activity. Uh, the overall threat right now still remains elevated at a 40% chance for an X-flare. Proton event there at 99% chance. M-flare at 75 and the C-flare activity obviously up there in the 99% uh, chance area. Uh, still seeing a proton event triggering up here across mainly the northern polar regions. Northern polar region also down here on the southern edge here. It does look like there's some type of flaring going on, a C2.6 that's stirring up there across the sunlit side of the Earth. From, let's see here, oh, it's hard to tell. I really don't see any specific area that's showing any threat out here. Uh, normally you'll see bright features. It looks like over here on the eastern limb. There's a little bright feature showing up there from that area mentioned yeah, in terms of you know that that massive sunspot area i think that's going to be a troublemaker here in the days ahead we'll continue to watch that really no major auroras in the forecast uh slight conditions coming in it looks like right now a little bit of storming coming in i think this is somewhat unexpected here because honestly they weren't really forecasting anything but it looks like things are stirring up a little bit there across the higher latitude areas but uh, we'll continue to watch this area uh 36.54 is that region that's coming around here on the eastern limb. This is an older, well, actually, it's fairly recent. Let me let me see here. Yeah, that's the most recent image. Uh, it's probably a little bit further out here on the eastern limb. We did see a little bit of complexity there on the magnetic uh, image. So it's, it does look like it's a massive area. This region over here, 36.64, is a region that just departed the western limb this was the area uh, that was capable that was uh the producer of all these auroras here recently and, and numerous x flares and m flares 
as you as you can see that's departing the western limb on the far side of the sun now but this area is fairly massive also another massive region up here that uh, we'll have to watch as well either way we are coming up into solar maximum here next year roughly about this time so anything can happen we could be getting uh, you know some obviously some stronger events here in the forecast uh, earthquake activity out here there's that earthquake down into the Peru Chile Trench really not a deep earthquake uh, roughly about 35 kilometers deep here into the area of the Santiago Peru area just offshore it looks like not a big one but uh, definitely seeing a little bit of aftershock activity following that five pointer as you can see there on the globe some movement taking place out here in the Atlantic Ocean with a 5.3 uh, look at Iceland up here we got a 3.5 stirring up here just along the plate boundary that could spell some trouble here for the Iceland area. Let's go over there and check out the latest information here from the Earthquake Activity Department. There's that five-pointer stirring up out here. Um, well, it looks like... Let's see here. Looks like they're reporting that as a 3.5. Yeah, 3.5, excuse me. Not for sure where a five pointer came in, but yeah, that makes sense. I was like, man, that's a that's a, a huge downgrade. Um, this activity stirring up along the rift zones here south, along the plate boundary. Now, obviously, rift zones divergent activity out here southwest of the area of interest. The area of interest right now, of course, is the Grindavik area, where we've been watching elevated earthquake activity and also inflation going on underneath the summit area. Uh, I feel it's just a matter of time here uh, before we see things really kick up out here across this area. And the latest update here from the Icelandic Meteorological Office was put out uh, yesterday that just kind of chatted about the continued land rise out here across the Savart Singhi area. And uh, it, again, that we got to watch this because there's obviously quite a bit of magma accumulation underneath the area and uh, it could go either way. It could go. Uh, where we least ex where we don't want to see it there across the Grindavik area, or it could continue there across the crater area, uh, as what we've seen here recently. Uh, let's see what else we got. Indian Ocean earthquake 5.3. Nothing big going on out there for now, luckily. Uh, one earthquake out there in the Mediterranean Sea, 4.4 in Greece. Uh, latest activity here on the globe though shows uh, looks like a handful of earthquakes out there. Mainly smaller microquakes in that region. Really no major earthquake activity. I think I need to bring this up here just a little bit. Because uh, there's a super deep earthquake here into the Tonga Trench. Look at this earthquake here. Let's see. Uh, right here. When we see this earthquake happen in this area, we know it's a deep earthquake. So 534 kilometers deep for a 4.4. Not a big earthquake, but we're noticing that continued deep earthquake activity here in the region. That uh, obviously a sign of things getting ready to recharge up here across the area in terms of further movement. 5.2 out in the eastern Papua New Guinea area. Japan, other areas fairly quiet. Uh, really not seeing anything showing up out here in Hawaii. What's going on out there? This thing's gone completely quiet. Only got about nine earthquakes out here. A little bit up around the Kilauea volcano. Uh, let's run over there real quick and double check the latest informational statement here from the uh, USGS. See what's going on. And uh, this update was put out today. They just kind of chatted about, I, I think I covered this this morning. Uh, stating that the volcano is currently not erupting, but the unrest continues there with earthquake activity. Um, let's go ahead and double check the deformation data across the area real quick. Hello, McFly. Oh, there we go. All right. So still going up here. Look at that. Um, and I like to compare the last month here of data. And as you can see, there's a stair-stepping event, each event higher than the one before, indicating further pressurization underneath the area. And that's a dandy of a one there. We've definitely jumped up here. So things are um, they're heightened 
Obviously, they're swelling. They are inflated underneath this area. Watch for earthquake activity, though. That's the key indicator of watching where the eruptive activity may take place. There is some movement out here across the eastern rift zone. We'll have to watch that pretty closely. These are uh, somewhat uh, uh, deeper. They're, they're definitely well underneath the surface area. Uh, but we'll continue to watch this and uh, see how things play out. California, uh, really no further activity out here in the region of Southern California. Uh, no major swarms going on there. A little bit of activity up here north around this area of the San Andreas Fault. Mo mainly small microquakes out there, but really nothing of concern. There's that earthquake there in Northern California from super early. Well, actually, that's late last night. Super early my time for a 4.0. That's a uh, deep earthquake in the Cascadia subduction zone there, about 25 kilometers deep. Forest trimmer activity goes there across the Northern California, Pacific Northwest. Relatively quiet. Nothing showing up out here tonight. Uh, New Jersey, look at that, kind of filled in a little bit. I was chatting about that this morning here. It kind of skipped New Jersey here as far as the earthquake pressure and migration across this area. Uh, we did see the area in Canada get hit a little bit, 2.7. But uh, it, it did fill in up here around New Jersey a little bit with a 1.3 and a little 0.7. So obviously some movement going on here across the North American Craton which is the center portion here of the North American plate. That's It's a relatively stable landmass that uh, really doesn't do much. It just, uh, you get a lot of deformation around it, uh, such as the Rocky Mountains and the Appalachian Mountains area. All kind of crunches up against the North American craton here. And you can see that migration tend to warp its way around this area recently. Um, it's it's kind of like a trend. If we see elevated earthquake activity out here across Texas, New Madrid seismic zone, you can pretty much uh, expect some further activity up here north, <clears throat> northeastward. And that's what we've seen here uh, in the last 24 hours. Puerto Rico area, swarm of quakes north of the Puerto Rico region. Watching this pretty closely. Um, we did see that uh, earthquake out here uh, yesterday, a little... 5-pointer, 5 5.6 5 uh, earthquake stirred up out here around the Mono Seamount, just on the side of it there. But, uh, you know, typical earthquake activity out here for the most part. No major quake activity for now, though. All right, uh, what else we got here, folks? Uh, anything going on in New Zealand? I, it, I don't know. There's 3.1, but uh, let's run over there real quick, check out the GeoNet servers. By the way, folks... I didn't get a chance to do the update here to, or the uh, drawing today. I apologize, but my schedule was super busy. I'm coming into the last couple of weeks here of the spring semester at college, and things have been overwhelming. Um, so we're going to have to do that drawing here Thursday, which is tomorrow my time. We'll try to shoot for late afternoon, which, which would probably work uh uh, best for me right now because things are they're, they're cooking out here <laughs> a lot of stuff going on 115 kilometers for 2.9 that's well underneath the North Island area just goes to show you the continued deep activity underneath this region watching the Hikarangi subduction zone right obviously it's a sleeping giant out there across the eastern coast there of North Island New Zealand and um, yeah, it does extend here off the northeastern coast of South Island as well. So there's actually a more percentage, a little bit higher percentage of seeing this area erupt compared to the entire area uh, here in the near future. So uh, something to do with the slow slip events going on up here underneath the North Island. But this area definitely primed here for some large scale earthquake activity. And you can see it, you know, in the oceanic crust uh, here on the, on the uh, USGS map. Very similar to what you see out here across the Cascadia subduction zone. But if you were to remove all these faults out here, uh, it would look very similar. And uh, yeah, so what else we got here? Storm Prediction Center. Severe weather, eh, it's, um, it's valid. There's not a huge tornado threat. This is mainly wind and hail threats uh, for the day tomorrow. 
five uh, percent chance. It, it's kind of a broad area for some tornado activity, but the main threat is going to be some wind and large damaging hail. But there is a possibility of the tornado outlook as well, uh, and that will shift further east here as we head towards the end of the week and the weekend. But uh, we'll continue to watch that. There is some signs going on here, uh, potentially a uh, tornadic type event as we head a little bit further into May. Look at this low pressure system out here. That's a that's an obvious area that could stir up some severe weather in the southern plain states once again. But uh, we'll, we'll continue to watch that. Nothing really going on out here across the west coast. Maybe into June. That's a little odd to see some rainfall out here in June. Uh, but today, yeah, today we hit 100 degrees out here where I live, just outside of Chico, California. I, I don't think that's something to be proud of. <laughs> I'm not even joking because summer hasn't even really hit yet. Um, 100 degrees in May, oh goodness, that means that things are going to cook uh, June, July, and August out here. So we'll just take it day by day. Really can't do nothing about it yet. We'll catch you guys back out here tomorrow in the morning, Thursday morning update. Uh, and, of course, we'll do the member drawing tomorrow afternoon. Apologize about it, but hopefully that gives everyone a chance to jump back on board if they missed it. But we'll do the member drawing here tomorrow, Thursday afternoon. We'll get it done. Have a good night, everyone. Stay safe out there.